Our next presenter is uh, no stranger to many of you, Roy Pogorzelski. Now, Roy is a man who wears many hats. He's a businessman, he's a community activist, he's an award-winning diversity advocate, a university lecturer, and director of the U of L's Augustany FNMI Gathering Place. I'm glad I got the pronunciation on that one correct. In all these roles, however, Roy has remained rooted in his Métis heritage, and he's here to talk about that experience here tonight. Roy, welcome up. Uh, well, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. This is very exciting. Uh, again, Darren, awesome lead-off. That was great. So I'm just excited to be here. So let's, let's roll, uh, Jaylene. So when most people think of the Métis people in Canada, they think of this gentleman, Louis Riel, a very historical figure in Canada, a very controversial figure in Canada, but to the Métis people, he is a hero for our cultural and our land rights up in northern, northern Saskatchewan and the Red River Settlement. Here's Batosh. My family actually comes from Meadow Lake and Green Lake up in northern Saskatchewan. It's extremely cold, it's extremely north, and it's around the area of Batosh where the Métis fought their resistance in 1885. My, many of my family members were involved in those battles. This is my great, 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 great uncle, Jean-Baptiste Fiddler. He fought alongside Louis Riel and Gabriel Dumont in northern Saskatchewan defending our Métis uh, land and cultural rights in that area. So our family has a very vested and traditional interest. Traditional interest in the sense that we were this northern people. And after 1885, from a diasporic perspective, the Métis were scattered throughout Canada. And many lived off road allowance off the side of streets and highways. Many were my family members as well. This is my mom and grandma. They taught me a lot about my traditional culture. They carried it with them, but both these beautiful women who taught me resilience and perseverance both went through schools in northern Saskatchewan. That was aimed at taking away their culture. My mom spoke Cree till she was eight and actually lost her language. So I've often struggled with who am I as a Métis person? Going in the city of Regina, working, living, doing those things here in Lethbridge, who am I as a Métis person? I've struggled with this question for lots of my life. And I've actually had to really reflect on who I am. In high school, we often heard that the Métis people were rebels and traitors, and this is what I was taught about my family up in northern Saskatchewan. And of course, I'm very ashamed by that because my, many of my close friends were taught the same history I was in those classrooms. So I turned to my cultural identity. And by doing this, I wanted to educate and teach people in this country about who the Métis people were. About, and I'm a Red River jigger, and I wanted to teach just about all the things that come with the culture that are phenomenal about Métis people. So my life, so I relate my life to a book. A lot of characters have actually come, entered my life at different chapters. They've led me on different paths, and they've created different narratives for me, which is really exciting when I think about the journey that I've been on and the journey that I'm going to continue to take. It's taught me throughout this journey that I have to conquer my fear. As an Aboriginal person, urban Aboriginal person, I have to conquer my fear every day by being an advocate, by standing up for not only Métis rights, but Indigenous rights in general in our country, and not let those barriers hold me back. It's taught me that I should never fear failure. Failure, because what is success anyways without failure? We fail to learn lessons, we fail to take, we take risks and we fail, and I've failed a ton, but I've learned a lot in that journey. I stand up and advocate for things like missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and sisters and spirit vigils because I want to speak out and be an advocate. That's my way of giving back to my ancestors that fought hard in this country to ensure that I had the right to speak out. I will march when Indigenous rights are under attack because that's what I believe in. I will be idle no more when people are marching in minus 30 weather in Regina, Saskatchewan for a very long walk down Albert Street and I'll stand up for those rights. I will leave my comfort zone. We have to leave our comfort zone. To do things that are truly interesting and great, you have to step out of that comfort zone. To be successful, sometimes you have to do the things that you fear the most, like travel, for example. You know, so these, uh, my elders have been a big, important part of my life. This is Elder Rod McLeod here in Lethbridge. He's been such a source of wisdom and comfort for me um, in Blackfoot territory. My elders back home have guided me on a process to not only find my culture, know my culture, but to be an advocate. I want to surround myself by positive people, and this is what the elders always told me. They said, you don't want to surround yourself with negative people that are going to pull you down. Let your ideas shine. Surround yourself with positive, innovative, reliable people in your life, and you'll always be able to achieve success. You'll make choices, and I love this quote, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And I've truly lived my life by this quote, because every 
Every path that I see, I want to do something that's different, unique, and going to introduce me to new people. I want to take that path less traveled. I've lived in Belgium. I've lived in uh, Austria. I've worked in Switzerland and Sweden. I've traveled to 33 different countries. I was scared out of my mind to do these things, but I did them, and I will never regret them. My journey will continue, and I will learn a lot of things about my identity, my narrative, my abilities, my attitude, my records, my stories, my beliefs. All these things are wrapped up in who I am as a Métis person, and that's what makes me proud to be Métis and to be here in front of you today. Thank you.